So right now we're going to look at all of the photos that we have. I've tried to separate them and sort them so that I can give you all of the different photos that we have of the front of the house, back of the house, west side, east side, etc, etc, room by room based on all of the photos that we have from the Apple Valley Police Department and from the BCA. We're starting here at the front of the house. Good thing to note is the snow. Note where those presents are. It's very important, very important to know the distance of this window here and how high you would have to be up to actually see anything on the ground or to actually see where those bodies were or to even possibly see where the blood writing was. It's not as easy as some might think. So again, this is just the front of the house that we're covering here in this section based on all of the photos that we have. Not in particular order, but I try to give it some type of order here. And you can see the way that the presents are laid up. This is after Colin Proc now stacked them up too. So it's not like this is how they were found. We don't really know how the presents were found. Colin Proc now knows. And maybe he stacked them up the same way that he saw them. I'm, I'm not sure. But I think it's very important to note that this is not exactly how the presents were found. They were more scattered based on what Colin told the cops. They were more scattered down. His presents were probably out there for about three weeks, I believe. You can see the window there, and you can see the curtain a little bit open. You see that in several of these uh, curtains here, in the window curtains, they're kind of open. Note the snow too, it's also very important to note the snow. You can see another cable going there. But you can see that the driveway, there's no snow there. How much snow is on the roof and is this common? Is this just the way that it, that it should be? I wonder if by looking at the snow on the roof, could you get a good view, a good idea of what the snowfall was like when the last snowfall was? Obviously you can go and you can actually look that up. Several different websites that you can look it up. Dan Hannon has looked that up and um, I guess it really wasn't that uh, snow. It wasn't really snowing at this time. Snow was on the ground, but that was about it. All right. It is a common courtesy in this state to uh, blow out or to shovel your neighbor's uh, driveway. So uh, Colin Proc now did that at least once, maybe twice to this house. We're not really sure, but he didn't hear anything, didn't see anything. There was no activity in this house as far as they knew. Um, for at least before Christmas. I think Judy Prochnow said the last time they had seen the Crowleys was before Christmas. Nice little town here, some nice shots. Some of the shots I don't really understand why the police took, but that's all right. You can see everything is taped up here. But again, look at those shingles. Look at how much snow is on top there. And we get another wide view, another angle here from across the street. Police cars are there. Police tape is there. It's an interesting area. It's an interesting home. If you look at the home now, if you were to compare the home how it is right now to uh, to these photos that we're looking at, um, the, there have been some major improvements, not just physically, but also spiritually from what I was told. So you can see these presents. Obviously, the big question is, well, how do the presents last for that long? And uh, they don't look soaked. They don't look wet. I mean, the bag does look wet. Everything does kind of look wet. Um, that's just my view on it. So I don't know what type of uh, wrapping paper that would have been, but very curious to see that. Okay, thanks a lot. We've just gone through the front of the house. And we're now gonna look at the presence and the front door as well. So let's, we're gonna get a little closer up, a little closer view of those presents of how they were. Again, this is not how the presents were found, but this is how Colin Proc now stock, stack them up. At one time, Colin was going to take them back to his house, and for whatever reason, he just was gonna, he stacked them up, heard the, the dog, and saw the dog attack that window. So now we're gonna look at these presents. I don't wanna hear any complaints about these presents. There's nothing wrong with these presents. These are great presents. There's nothing, I mean, some of that stuff really bothered me, but maybe that's just me taking it a little too personal. Uh, of what people say everybody has the freedom of speech you can say whatever you want so these zombie um, zombie targets that's all normal too it's just some of the one of the zombie targets look like um, uh, one of the the guy that was shot in the in that Bundy case but so we're looking at these presents you can see the damage of these presents here um, you can see that the paper does look warped 
Yeah, there's that brown bag. And inside that brown bag is where that $14,000 check is gonna be, it, along with the bill from David's lawyer. Both of those things are in there. I think the bill is only about 500 bucks or something like that. But you can see these shooting targets. You'll see some of the same shooting targets will be found in the garage. You'll, we'll see those later. But um, very heartbreaking stuff here to really see these presents. And apparently they were there for about three weeks. And I know some people have raised some questions about Wow, they, they look really good for being there for three weeks. And I would have to agree, especially if those paper targets were just set up like that, just set out there. Um, but if there's no snowfall, okay. And they were kind of scattered around as well. That's the interesting one right there. And there is another very interesting one. These zombies, I'm not sure what's up with the whole zombie thing. But inside this one is a world map. And I believe that is from Rania's grandfather. Very cool map. I actually want that map. I need a map like that. This one is an interesting toy. Um, we happened to get this for my nephew on the same year that I was looking at these photos. Um, and it is a very frustrating, very frustrating toy here. I don't know if you've ever uh, tried that, but this is brain work. This is good for the child's brain. There was a lot of good things here. Um, they, you know, coloring crowns, just the... Uh, I don't know okay I'm not gonna go off on some of the comments about what people have made about those presents but now we see uh, this flashlight here we're seeing some of these other gifts wounded veterans are in crisis the, the VFW um, this is a gift to Rania from um, her aunt and it, it, that's that's awesome that's great and you can see Rania draws. she draws a lot right she's always drawing always got that stuff out so they got her a nice little pack there. I think these presents are great. Uh, so I'm not. <laughs> and here's that world map. Nice world map there. And there is the invoice for 50 bucks. Okay, I said a few hundred. Okay, obviously it's not. It was for 50 bucks. Two Hothead Productions, which is David Crowley. There's the front of the house. We're going to look at the front door. They're very clear to focus. Take multiple shots of that front door. And to just see no forced entry, I guess, is what they're looking for. This is one of their... Um, so they believe there was no forced entry because they're looking at the door. Door looks good. We're even going to look at the inside of the door here. We're going to come back to the inside of the door as well. You can see some shoes there. And you can see um, some of this door looks brand new. Some of it looks old. Just an interesting thing about the door and uh they're just showing the no forced entry some scratches some marks some things like that and they're very clear to focus on that it almost looks like it was kicked in or something it's weird it's i thought that was kind of odd but that wood on the last part was kind of strange so here is the mailbox you can see this nice mailbox here for three people 1051 1048 and 1047 and you'll notice there's only one paper in there. There's a few papers in the 1048, but only one paper. One Sun This Week newspaper. This is a weekly newspaper that was free. There should be two more. There should be one in the house, which we'll see later. There's one here that we can see. And there's two that are missing. Where are the other two? I'm very curious to see what happened with those other two and why they're not here. But as you can see, there were in 1048. So here is the mailbox that's open. You can see all the mail. How much mail does that look like? A couple weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Your guess is as good as mine. But those dates on the mail will be very, very helpful to see. And we can obviously see one more shot there of that Sun This Week paper. Here we go. This is what it looks like on the outside. January 2nd. Dated January 2nd, not delivered January 2nd. Very important to, to note that. We'll come back to that. All right, they pulled out some of these documents to see. And what's interesting is uh, Tara Becker was actually standing next to the mailbox when the mailman came. So it kind of gives us an idea of when the mailman would actually show up more in the, in the daytime, maybe around 1 p.m., 2 p.m. But here we have some more mail. I noticed one thing uh, here, Hothead, right? There's the Hothead Productions, 1051. Crowley, here's another one. I, I don't know who this one is from, but um, uh, it's postmarked December 29th there. So you can obviously see that. It's ripped open because the police opened it, by the way. 
Now we're going to move on to the west side of the house here. And here are the two garbages. You'll notice you saw the little uh, box there that was there that's not there anymore. And now we're looking inside of the bigger garbage as well. Still inside of that big garbage. Note the little marks to the left there. And here is the recycle garbage can, the smaller one. I'm going to open that up. There's also a couple drops on the top of that can as well. And we're going to look inside and see one, two, maybe three pieces of paper. And that's it. Maybe two. However you want to look at it. But uh, it's interesting to see how, the, how those got in there. Um, obviously, somebody put them in there. So trash date was, I believe, on Tuesdays, if I remember correctly. Dan Hannon did some great research on that. Here is that door. One of the first things that I noticed is it looked like blood on this door. It really looked like blood on this on this doorknob. So I still go back and forth. Because it's not recorded as blood, I'm gonna go ahead right now and just say, all right, well, I'm gonna give the authorities the benefit of the doubt. Could be some varnish, maybe even paint. And actually, um, looking at it closer, it could be brown paint that just, but then you look at that brown paint there and it's like there were some touch-ups done. So maybe that's what it's from. You can clearly see where the touch-ups are done in this photo here. So, not really blood, definitely brown paint. That would be my guess there. We're going to see two different sets of photos here. We're going to see some photos with the door slightly ajar, one-fourth of an inch. And we're going to see this door fully open. And here we can see apparently there were animal tracks and human tracks. And now we get a further view of where those animal tracks and human tracks were. You can see how far back they went to take photos. Here's some deeper ones. This gives us a kind of a measure of how deep that snow was. There is the front door that is open. In the photo that we just saw, you did see Paleo. Paleo was there. He was in one of the photos there. And now, for some reason, now the door is closed. So I'm not sure exactly when this was taken, if it was before or after the dog was taken out. Not really sure, but they take photos of this as well. And I know some people have pointed out some of those red markings on that door. And so it's a little misleading. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's not the right word for it, but that's okay. I mean, uh, that door, you can clearly see right now it is closed, but there's, I'm not sure what those little red marks are, what's going on there, but it's definitely something. And again, it doesn't have to be blood. I'm not saying it's blood, but it's something. It's some markings. Um, that's all we know for sure. But we know these these photos here, Again, I'm not really sure. You can see it's, they're getting darker. Maybe the sun is going down. And I'm not sure. Now the door is fully open. So now with the door completely open, uh, we can just walk right in, right? So here's another extended view back there. That gives you kind of, um, kind of a good view of uh, that window and how the dog might have pawed at the window. We're now inside of the house. Looking inside here, looking at that uh, door Trying to see if there's anything of value here. And I believe this again goes back to the, I'm not sure what that little piece is, that little black piece is there, but that open door was um, probably one more thing that they said, no forced entry, because there wouldn't need to be any forced entry. Now they're looking at these shoes, calculating these shoes and getting some measurements because there were a lot of footprints in the backyard of the snow in the back of the house and I'm sure you all saw that so it just went back to why are there so many so many different ways so many different trails so they're measuring their feet and they don't really ever come to the conclusion I don't know how they ever could to say that well all of those footprints were ours they don't really say that there's there's human tracks and there's animal tracks back there too so it could be critters I'm not sure what type of critters would be in this area obviously there was something couldn't have been that dog because the dog was locked up in the house for three weeks according to official reports official theory I should say these shoes these sketchers I think these are David shoes I think these are David shoes from inside of the house from behind that recliner I could be wrong but I thought that was interesting that they took photos of them wearing the shoes and then in that one they had photos of them not wearing so now we can see all of these tracks tons of tracks there right um, some human mostly human but somewhere in there there are animal tracks in there as well how deep is that snow for all of you snow lovers and all of you experts on snow, tell me how deep that snow is, you, you think. I, I'd be very curious about that. 
All right, and this is that will lead down into the basement. You can see a little dent there. Now we're getting into the windows. We're still in the back, right? We're still in the back of the, of the house. We can see those curtains. We want to see those curtains. One of the kitchen windows in the back was also unlocked. It wasn't open, but it was un unlocked. Everything else was locked except for two things in the kitchen, the kitchen window and the rear slider. Everything else is locked except for those two. So there you go. So no need for forced entry. You got two ways for people to get in, right? And we're now going to look at the east side of this house. Again, you can see lines going from the top level into the basement. At least two there. And really not too much here on this side, but only thing of value is uh, the fact that there's no windows on this side. You can see maybe some animal tracks right there on the left side, lower left side there. But uh, other than that, that's about it for that one. Now we're inside the house, we're going to look at that back room. One of the things we're going to notice about that back room is we did not get any photos of the back room when we first, um, when we got the first 464 photos from the Apple Valley Police. Look at all that dog poop. You can see a lot of dog poop there. I think this is one of the areas where the dog was kind of going poop. This is misleading because that the basement door to the left looks closed. It apparently, in my view, is it was not closed. This door was open, meaning the dog had access to it. You just saw to the left, you just saw dog food there. There was dog food. We just saw the image that we just saw right here is the only image where you might be able to see that there was a bullet in the living room ceiling but we're looking at the kitchen right now we're looking at this back room and uh, now we're going to the kitchen counter and you can see there's some milk bones on that counter you can see the coffee can you measure by the food by what you're seeing by the coffee by this can we measure uh, how long these bodies were there there's some money in there number 11 I'm not sure what that is but you can see some pills out there on the counter definitely had some there in that drawer and uh, this window is probably the kitchen window that was left open it's the only kitchen window so it must be and of course here we go the grease as well we've done a couple grease tests done a couple tests with these with this stuff and I think uh, we need to do some more tests on this how long was this pan sitting there how long were these things sitting there looking at the refrigerator. We never got photos of inside of the refrigerator, but I would have loved to have gotten some, and I hope that in the future we can get some photos to see what is inside of that refrigerator because we don't see any beer anywhere. We see nothing like that. University of Minnesota, School of Public Health. Here is that note that we see, which I think is between David and Kamel, back and forth, you know, couples writing weird random letters <laughs> you'll see that you'll see that in a couple different places there's also a note behind there uh, these are tagged as number 46 and number 47 there are two separate tag numbers so you can get some of the tag numbers 46 and 47 confused here is what that note that was folded up said and there you go d i love you baby grug bug compare that handwriting make sure it's the same we're looking at the counter now. You can see number 17. We got some blood there. We're going to get into the, oh, it's a blurry picture. We're going to get into this blood and we're going to see there's some hair on the floor as well. But this blood and there's some other blood markings, but this is the one that they really capture. You can see all of the other ones. So obviously they can't, couldn't get them all, but number 17 is that blood marking there. And there's number 20. This is underneath uh, the um, counter, that kitchen island. This is underneath that kitchen island, this kitchen island that we're looking at here. A lot of interesting stuff here, and I don't know if there should be. I'm not sure why the cell phone is there. It's bloody, but it's placed there. There's some blood on that tissue box that we'll see as well. And we'll see a lot of interesting things here. That's number 26 clearly see that and that is clearly a finger from my view and but why is this here not only is this here look at this okay so you have a bloody phone that has a crack in it a couple cracks but the headphones don't look bloody nothing wrong with those headphones but it's all taken out of the pockets somebody said we got to take this out of our pockets 
empty your pockets, buddy. <laughs> that was the first thing that I thought of. Lighters, there's another lighter. You're gonna see lighters everywhere, lighters all over this house. Okay, that looks like, it looks cracked to me. It looks cracked. So I'm looking at the cell phone number 35 there. And look at all that blood on there. There's a lot of blood on that thing. But what's interesting is there's no blood on the um, on the headphones that were on top of it. Now we're looking at the other side. They've turned this over. This is David's cell phone. There's really no doubt for me on the island counter is David's cell phone. Here's another little iPad that we're going to see, number six. Um, all of these things, all of the electronics were taken in. They were gone through. They went through everything. And they found no reason why David would have committed these crimes. That needs to be clear. Here's his driver's license. I mean, everything is just right out there. It's, oh, hey, I just killed everybody. I'm just going to throw it, put everything out of my pockets. And yeah, it's just, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Not following it. All right, there's some of the BCA documents there, which is kind of odd that they have all that there. And we're still looking at the counter. There's number 16. So you can see the trajectory of the blood, maybe. Are these, you know, is this a result from somebody being shot? Is this a result from somebody wiping blood off of their hands? It's definitely blood on that cell phone. Um, this kind of looks like that there was somebody shot there. So there we go. So now we're getting into the laptop. The laptop is one of the most important things that we're going to see here. Look at that little Bluetooth little device there. Number 24. Uh, and number 25 has some blood on the side as well. It's very important to see that. There's 25 without the label. And there's 25 with the label. And there's a lot here, right? What is going on here? Look at that. It's just, it's kind of just scattered around. It's just kind of, uh, it's just kind of there. It's kind of out there. But um, uh, be very curious to see what those test results were. Now the MacBook Pro was off. You can see the screen is off. Here we are, another in, indention. But looking at the keys, judging by the keys, number 24, you can see exactly what was written, most likely in blood, what is covered in blood and what is not. So everything i have loved you all with all of my heart all of those keys should be bloody that white i think is more snow more related to some type of snow i could be wrong again but and there's blood all over there all over this keyboard there's blood even on the command key you see some blood there on the shift key and some blood on the lower side number 23 almost looks like a palm print there so you, you could in theory compare this palm print to what you see on the floor and see what is a palm and what is a foot but I'll leave that to you there's some hair as well a lot of hair a lot of hair that's mixed in with this you can get a closer view inside of that cup and now we're going through not only 23 and 24 but we got ABC now none of this is going to show none of this is going to tie to David so they can't prove that David wrote this that's the way that I interpret it because if they cannot tie this to David, how do they know David wrote this? They're claiming David wrote three things in three separate rooms. Okay, you can claim that, but can you prove it? And the answer is no. Did you try to prove it? Yes. And the results showed no. Why? Because they could not get a sample of David's palm. Well, then how do they know that David did it? here we go here's another it's not luminol that they sprayed here but they did spray something similar to it many people have pointed it out to me what this is and i hope somebody will leave it in the comments um i can go and look up i can go look that up too as well but uh, that's why i love our group members and our non-group members and all of our great people that are looking for the truth to find out what is going on here so they spray all this and still nothing Still no tie to David. Oh, how sad. Well, then how do you know that David did this, right? They're accusing. They can't prove. But they still keep accusing. If you accuse and you can't prove, the next step, the third step, should be to say he's innocent. Okay, there's one of the only pictures that we have that shows I have loved you all with all my heart. And now it's gone. All of a sudden it's gone, right? There it is. So once they start swabbing this, uh, they start taking it out. And there we can see a closer view of some of the playlist stuff. 
Now, obviously, you can see some of these are not in order because you can see the screen is on some, it's off and some. So there's the back. You see that love, there's a lot. it's a key thing here is love. And yet they're telling us there was no love. They, he killed everybody that he loved, whatever. There's the dishwasher. There's been some questions about that. My only question is, was it on, was it off? It's hard to believe that it was on for three weeks. I, I get it. Here's the kitchen um, garbage. We're now looking inside of the garbage here. People have wondered about some presents. Where are the presents? You can see at least one present from Rania to, to her mom. Some eggnog in the back. And uh, some hair dye as well, possibly. Now here we have December 26th. So this is the one that should be here. Now the date on which this was taken to the house is still in question because you have three different people telling you three different stories. The guy who dropped off the paper says one day, his mom says an, a second day, and the, the person who is in charge of this paper going out gives us a third day. So you can look more on that um, in my gray stage article that I did a, a long time ago, but it definitely covers that and really makes my head scratch. And the only thing left to do is to ask the coordinator what the heck was going on here. So here is the dishwasher and we can see the dishwasher is open. It was found open. This is how it was found here. Number 22, this little blood, another little blood speck. What is this blood speck doing here? All the lights are on on that dishwasher. Here's another close up view. So if the lights were on, that makes me think that they were about to run this and something happened. The scene was interrupted. You can clearly see that by the fact that you see the dish soap there. The dish soap thing is open. So I don't know. Here's number 21. These little spots, where are these spots coming from? How do these little spots get here? But there's no other, there's no other footprints or anything like that in any of the other areas. It is strange. I, I definitely agree with people who have brought that up. It is strange. Where's all the footprints? Where's all the fingerprints? Where is everything? But then you have one little spot, one little spot here and a little spot there. Okay. Okay, we're now looking at the photo leading into the living room. And here is that living room looking at it from the kitchen. And there is the blood writing on the wall. Very disturbing. You can even see a foot at the bottom of that photo there too. Just some of the tips of the feet. And you can also see on the couch, if you're looking at this image on the left side, there's bone wrapped in hair. We're getting here a closer view of the Alau Akbar. A little blood there on the ceiling possibly. Look at the time. That's very important. The books that are over there. There was a Quran found, so the question was, was that Quran part of this? Was it on that bookshelf there? And the question about the blood writing, was it a live hand? Was it a dead hand? Was it a, a, was it a gloved hand? So those were some of the things going back and forth. This gives us a really good view here of uh, what was written. There's a very sad picture, cool picture of all three of them together. And a close up of that one too. This is on that bookshelf. So I was wondering where the, and of course, uh, one of the only images of the bodies that you can see there and possibly the skull. I think maybe the temporal bone. Um, I know there's it's been some back and forth on that, but there's that skull there. Some of the Quran pieces, a lot of Quran pieces torn out, different areas and the question I guess would be, was this purposely laid out like this, right? Were these just random pages? So uh, I never really got too deeply into the pages that we're seeing here, but it's very interesting stuff. There is the live round that was found. That's an interesting one. How did the live round get there? And you can see some other flesh and hair, lots of hair everywhere, all different types of hair. There is the part of, of the teeth in the upper corner and a close-up of that knife, which is open, which to me would also show a sign of a struggle, uh, maybe not forced entry, but a sign of a struggle, was the hair cut. There's no indication where the, where the uh, documents say that the hair was cut. Here's a knife, how we first got it. And I thought it was just camouflage, but there was blood on that knife. Some of the, the shell casings. These are all submitted for testing and nothing is found on them. So no tests were conclusive, as far as I remember. And there is the hand. Look at David's left hand, uh, the hand sign that it's making. You can see the Quran there, closer up. Number four, it's item four. 
There's another one of item 9, which is another shell casing. And of course, some more um, hair and some flesh and just mixed in. Look at everything that is just mixed in. Uh, was that from the dog or was it something else? I'll let you decide that. Christmas tree. That blue tube in the back. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. So that gives us another indication there. There's number 30 with the, another shell. They're all tested. All of these shells are tested, but nothing's really found. Nothing of value, if I remember. Be good. It'll be good to go back and look at that. But the living room is definitely the most important part because that's where the bodies were found. And the lack of blood, unless the blood is mixed in with that carpet there, and there's item 31, which is a fragment. Item 31 was one that they used to compare to item 57 later on. There's another shot of the skull uh, in the upper corner there. Here's the Quran. Open to this page, it was interesting. You can see a little bit of David's finger there. You can see how close the Quran was. Well, the other question is how close was the actual gun? So there is some bloody footprint, sorry, bloody fingerprints there mixed in with hair, pages ripped out. Was it ripped out here purposely, and why was it set here? If David did all this and set it there, it just set it there, or was he? Are they going to tell us that he was holding the Quran while he shot himself? I, I highly doubt it. But you can see the lack of blood here, right? Uh, there are brain matter and all that type of stuff. There's number thirty-seven. Here's another shot. There's the decomp, most likely, but could also be blood. But I'm gonna, you know, again, I'll let you decide whatever you want on that one. You can see the little curve below the number four on the carpet there and uh, you can kind of make an outline of where the three bodies were, at least of where David and Kamel's bodies were. Maybe not Rania because she was kind of leaning up against Kamel's left leg while Kamel was face down facing number 44 in that area, somewhere in that area. You can see all the carpet, all the blankets are now moved Looks like blood or decomp on that blue blanket in the left corner. The uh, laptop is also there, and we get some more view, another view of that. You see all the different hair, different colors of hair at some point. Some of the shawl has been ripped right there. Could that have been from, from, from the dog? Uh, we can assume that, I guess. And here's another close-up of that Surface Pro, Kamel Surface Pro, that she was watching, allegedly, when she got shot and they put it up on the kitchen table to take a better shot. There's number 42. In the upper corner above number 42, uh, there was a question about if there was a bullet there too. So trying to see, because police did miss number 53, and that is the bullet that they will tie to Rania's blood. So how they miss that is one thing. And it rolls out of this carpet, unless there's another carpet that, we don't, that we're not seeing here, uh, number 53 rolls out of this carpet and is found two days later after the police are gone, after the bodies are taken out. So very disturbing stuff here. There's a closer shot of number 43. Now getting into 44. And it's just devastating. And you can see where the bullet is, where the bullet landed. Uh, very interesting stuff there. That's number 44. Some of the hair up there did kind of look cut. So be curious to see what's going on with that, what's going on with all the cut hair. And here's another shot. All the different angles, just trying to give you all the different angles to see this carpet. And I do believe a lot of that is just, that's why we're not seeing a lot of blood is because it's uh, this carpet stained, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I don't know anything about this. I'm just guessing, could be wrong. There's number F. F is gonna lead into the bullet that we're gonna see that is lodged in the south basement wall we're going to see that one later on. We'll definitely get there. Some more closer shots showing how it went through. Obviously, uh, police were able to look down and find this bullet. But for whatever reason, they could not look up and find item 57 until one month later when somebody tells them that item 57 exists. So here's part of the fragments of F, of item F, that will go down into the south wall of the basement and be lodged into the south wall there. So lots of holes here, holes on both sides of the carpet, obviously holes on both sides of this wood floor, and of course the hole into the, um, into the side of the, 
so F is a big one that goes down and then of course it's another good shot of F and we're also gonna see where Kamel's body is bagged that's not where her body was found it's just where it was bagged you can see on that uh, table the pyramid photo now there's a ring um, it's either I don't know if it's Kamel's ring or David's ring but there was a ring there on that table all of a sudden there you get a nice um, shot of those footprints or fingerprints whatever you think it is it's there and you can see the direction of the of the blood I think that's also key to see where that blood goes everything looks like it's leaning leading from the uh, living room carpet which is one reason why I do believe the bodies were killed here but again just a guess just a theory this is where they were found obviously we we'll have to start there uh, measuring the dog poop looking at the dog poop and how old that poop could be will that help us get any indication of how long the bodies were actually here in the house I think that's a big one because you saw Kamel's foot there um, the sock was I guess was from the decomp not necessarily from any blood or anything but these are bloody footprints there there's number 13 where they're just kind of probably looking at the direction of how the blood is, where the blood goes uh, very disturbing stuff here I was disturbed going back to those prints there number 14 to me they look like footprints uh, the authorities call them footprints they're labeled as footprints but again you can judge for yourself what you think it is but that's number 14 there a different number 14 than uh, other 14s you might see because there's different item lists I think there's three three lists now that to me is number 15 is one of the more clearer ones that looks like a like a foot like a right foot and more hair hair everywhere how far the hair went and where some of the blood was here's another interesting one where you just get some of the little blood splatter there we're number 16 looking back on this floor here again you can kind of see where the blood is coming from and get some idea there and that could be because there's so much blood on that recliner maybe that's why we're not necessarily seeing a lot of blood in the area I don't know I mean I'm just trying to look at all this from all different ways here but definitely some of the later photos like I thought that they would do show more blood not everything is tested even that looks like maybe a little paw print or something there might have been a little paw print in that one because the dog was walking around next to number 18 to the to the right of number 18 and then here in the center of this photo here as well kind of looks like maybe a paw print but I don't know you would kind of expect more the dog was definitely here there's dog poop there so it was in this area um, there's you know the, the the lack of blood I guess is what it goes back to there's number two, obviously. Number two, that's another interesting. Why is number two way over here? So I was <laughs> curious about that. But okay. That's another casing. So they took, they, we got a lot of photos on this part here. A lot of photos that show this. Some of those lines, you know, some of that lines underneath 18. I was thinking maybe that was from the dog or something too. Uh, you can see how far that hair went and why was there only one right foot only the right foot was bloody that would be that would be the uh, logical answer I would say yeah very disturbing very disturbing images here uh, for many reasons that one look, kind of looks like they're counter crossing number what is it number 14 and E kind of look like they're counter crossing so that's D and 15 and I think where E is I think that's the same foot so but man very wide steps David was about six feet tall maybe a little under six feet 
So, but it would have to be very wide steps. Just take one off the carpet and then one to the, uh, to take out everything from his pockets. Hmm. And then go back, I guess. And this is after these are sprayed here. And those, you can almost see the ones that were sprayed. I don't know if this, and there's the shoes in the background. This was before the marker was out. That's where item two is. There's number two, another shell casing with some hair there. Hair is everywhere. Hair and hair in the casings go hand in hand. Some more dog poop. You can see some is fresh, some is old. All different types. And uh, that one down at the bottom does not look very healthy at all. So again, this is just a collection of all of the photos that we have that we're going through. So you're seeing some of the same things. There's the three body bags. Not where the bodies are found. Again, couch is pushed back. Now this recliner, item 34, makes you think somebody was shot at a low level, maybe on the ground, face down, I don't know, face up. But this whole area, this 34 area, that is not ever... It's not ever tested. It's just It just kind of gets lost in the shuffle. I don't know what they could have done. They could have ripped that out. If they were able to rip out some of the south basement wall, why couldn't they rip out a piece of this, of this recliner and test it? And then how did the hair get way up there as well? And then you can see some of the blood splatter and how far it actually goes. How close would the bodies, would anybody had to have been and from what angle, from, from what height? this cage where the dog is the dog could have been put in that cage it was left out purposely maybe the dog at some point was in that cage and you can see how far some of this stuff goes or that item that number 32 and how far that goes out there right next to where the dog cage was this this stuff travel it's going very very far how does it get way over here it has to go past the christmas tree past that recliner it's it's very interesting unless something was dragged here that was kind of my first view of how you could see in the uh, upper right corner where the yellow marker is kind of looks like something might have been dragged and they're they're going to find another casing there it's interesting the way that they label i guess they're labeling them from just walking from everything from the back door in number two i believe this is going to be number three yep number three there you can see uh, David's shoe that was a shoe that I was talking about to compare to the one that they had for his footprints in the snow nothing came of that so there's number 19 more blood and just spots right but what angle from what angle where is it going it looks it kind of looks like multiple right we got two different angles here that's a it's an interesting one right there 22 is kind of like was something dragged I was wondering was anything dragged here and if it was why did it kind of stop here or was this where the dog just kind of uh, walked right into it I'm, I'm not sure I don't know what this is that little um, little water spot though I believe is from the authorities when they came in through the through the back door from from the snow on their feet just a guess I don't know or else that doesn't make any sense either because that definitely is not going to be there for th for three weeks but by this time they had marked everything so I think it was just from their shoes and there's 20 20 is an interesting one because it almost look, looks like a finger almost looks like a finger so I don't know maybe it was was somebody grabbing there I, I'm not sure and on that Voss you can see how far up it goes and uh, what is that 29 you see number 29 there is all of these drops they 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 tweak the camera that's why the the wall looked um looked very different there it looked pink almost so let's look at the front closet here not really a whole lot here you can see um there's a military jacket i kept this this way i did not tilt it like i could have because it did not look right it made the photo look kind of weird so just want to give you a view of everything that is in that front closet this is one of the more recent ones that that we got i did not have this and this closet was closed and again just just shoes really not much there nothing of no blood i think somebody said there might have been blood in that front closet on one of those um one of those jackets there there shouldn't have been 
unless somebody took it off or something. And here's more of the photos of that front door. Front door is another interesting one here because in some areas of where that doorknob is, right there, the doorknob itself doesn't look very new, but um, uh, that wood, it just, I don't know, it, it just kind of looks off. Something just looks off. It looks like something else was added on. Who knows? So when I mean adding on, just David was doing some minor upgrades, right? That's all I mean. Not that, not anything after the death, just what David was doing. He was the, the, the handyman of the house and doing this himself. So, so they're just looking for forced entry or lack thereof. You can see again, another little blood splatter that is all the way next to that light, which would explain why Sidra, um, I believe it was Sidra had spoken about some of the books that they got back had blood on them and that would explain why how far that blood traveled blood is probably would have had to have been on the Christmas tree and of course that's not where the gun was found obviously and you can see again how far it goes it goes very very far and so it doesn't I don't know it's uh, from from what angle I guess how far how would David have had to have been sitting down, kneeling down? Here's another interesting one where you have the gun and you have the blood on the gun, on the trigger. David's blood was on that trigger. His blood, uh, there was a positive DNA of blood on that trigger that matched David's. However, it did not match, uh, you know, they were not able to conclusively um, tie the magazine the one in the, in the magazine to to david but they couldn't rule out kamel and they couldn't rule out rania it's an interesting one so there you can see the gun and the hairs the hair is there too especially where the hairs are it just, it just looked like somebody like got pistol whipped i don't know maybe maybe it's just I mean, the hairs that just doesn't naturally happen like that so at some point i think whoever had this gun they had to reload because you can see some of the markings there now they tested those but they could not get a conclusive match to David on those prints because they didn't have a match of the prints there were two bullets in there that were inside and then there was one in the chamber so I wanted to make that clear too so everybody knows that two bullets inside of the magazine one in the chamber they could not conclusively tie this to David. They could put his blood on the trigger. I do want to make that clear. Let's move on to the hallway and the office bedroom. Here in the hallway, there you see how far that blood really travels. Those little splatters, they all travel. And I tried to give you a good view of the hallway all the way down, uh, photo by photo, kind of walking you down room by room. First, we're going to go into the office room to the right. Rania's room is straight ahead. David's room would be to the to the to the left, to the far left. And kind of in order down the hallway, here are the are the photos that we have here. So some very interesting stuff that we're seeing. Uh, the thermostat set to sixty eight. It's going to hold at sixty eight. And there you go. There's your temperature. So here's a collage of some of the photos there. Kind of looks like this might have fallen down and was picked back up just, just by the way that the photos are in there. Unless it was purposely meant to be like that. I find that hard to believe. So I think at some point that fell down. And here there's the there's egg on your face and you got the photos there. Nicer view. Uh, better shot there. All the family. So I mean they had photos up of their family. <laughs> didn't seem like they didn't love their family or you know it didn't have a big problem with their family whatever it was it didn't there's no indication that it was something too serious just based on the little information that we have here so going down that hallway next to the office room right outside of it is number 27 which is probably it's definitely blood right you can tell that it's that it's blood but uh, from a from a finger most likely right all right, now we're gonna go into the office bedroom. We're gonna look at the couch. There's that couch there. Similar to the couch they have downstairs in the basement. 
there's what's going on there's what's in the garbage can so we can see all that and of course notes everywhere post-it notes lots of writings handwritings and there is Hera Act 1's and so I was curious to see what that is it's a I forget what it what it was some type of play or something but there's a password list right there got David's there got Camille's there books they're gonna read lots of note post-it notes so uh, paper people <laughs> that's what I would have been looking for is paper and there it is look at that another paper towel there it's out and as you can see we'll get a closer view a better view of what's on that screen there we go there's a much better view right there it's definitely working definitely working I mean it was open this stuff was open it was on it was in motion is what it seems like <laughs> work was in motion there's love right there you can see that in the um, on the top kind of gonna go back I guess a little bit here and we're looking at some of the other photos this is from this is these are the BCA ones I believe but Again, try to put them in some kind of order. They're not really in the best order here, but you can see when the screen is off and then when it's on. So you kind of get a get a view of that. But I think the screen screen would have had to have been off in sleep mode. There's a note. You can look at the way that the chair is set. All of the stuff missing on the bottom. There's definitely dirt, dust. Here is that note. This is how they find it that pin they're going to be able to um, get one swab from that pin and that's about it so you can see Christmas is coming it will be a new year and that six looks like it was a five or maybe <laughs> it just looks a little weird uh, what do we got here Kevlar helmet in aluminum foil so lots of notes lots of writings I'm assuming all related to the project that he's working on to the gray state project note where the chair is now the chair has been moved a little bit markers are up everything is being marked there's number 13 screen is back on that is on the um, that is on the table there too yep and there's some more of the passwords for 21 oh boy lots of them but there it, it's it's all on paper so we have they have a note that they type out later okay there's 39 there's some more blood and none of this really um i mean none of it really goes back and directly ties to david that's the biggest problem that they've had and that's the problem that they're going to continue to have unfortunately there it is submit to allah open the rise most recent version some blood there and it's flipped open it's flipped open on the back side actually that's I thought that was interesting so here's one side of it and you can see the Sandy Hook Fast and Furious BHD graduation some interesting stuff that the Titanic building seven crossed off that one was always an interesting one to me and here if you look at the lower level it just looks like of an area that where something was wiped up or just not that much dust whereas everywhere else is very dusty so here are the terabytes the hard drive the terabytes of data that they got that they didn't find anything uh, showing them any motive of why David was guilty nothing there was nothing there but of all of these terabytes of data hmm, interesting yep they'll still just say that he's guilty and that'll be it We've got one of the family pictures and there's another one there nice hard drive got one of those lots of hard drives lots of backup hard drives everything's stored kind of I guess it's stored offline there's an old school one good for photos things like that Seagate yeah everything back up everything is being backed up GSC gray state oh gray state C gray state B so A, B, C, D. So a lot of these could have just been, um, you know, 
copy one, copy two, copy three, copy four. Or maybe it was just, you know, part one, part A, part B, part C, et cetera, et cetera. There's GSA. Be curious to see if the same stuff on GSA is on GSB and GSC. A little blurry there. Number 18, BX. Number 19, HHP Hothead Productions. 26, there's some of the chords. Oh, Lexar. Hmm. Missed that one before. All right, now we're looking at the wall here that's leading up to the closet inside of the office bedroom. I've always loved you forever. A little Mexican thing, forever. Registered nurse. It's Kamel's files, her documents in there. It's a working office. There's another maybe iPad, Surface Pro, something like that over there as well. Dear Any American. Some checklists. All showing signs for the future. GS 2015 schedule. It's all there. Okay, there's the WGA. There is the Gray State. That's what it is for the writer. He's the writer of Gray State. Expires 6519. Oh, it's going to expire this year. Interesting. Curious to see what happens then. Here's his unit. Well, photos of the unit there and then we're getting into the to the closet gray state the rise more stuff there's the camera you can see the camera up there more documents on the bottom can come out stuff second closet <laughs> there's the bohemian grove owl we only got one shot of that and get a little closer shot of the bottom of the owl there but that's about it the printer, the keys. That was another one. The keys right there. Maybe a title, car title right next to it. There you go. Somebody gonna sell this car? It looks like it. More of the hard drives. Another backup, lots of backup hard drives. But I think the keys on the table were some of the most interesting to me. Yep, another hard drive, another backup. GS Backup 03. Look at this, the Rise. Oh, more stuff about the Rise. I mean, definitely <laughs> definitely doesn't seem like someone who's coming to an end. It's, it seems like just someone who's uh, storing things, stacking things, having databases, having backups. Backups for backups. And there you go, everything is backup. CT backup. The keys, a little closer view of the keys there. Another archive, 003. They're, they're labeled. Everything is nicely labeled. So he knows what's on them. That would make sense. There's a Seagate. Another little hard drive there. Again, they have all of this stuff and nothing there. Now, this one's interesting because it does look like maybe there could have been some blood on that. This hothead one, this is on the couch. I'm not sure where that number 35 came from, but there's more backups. There's a lot more stuff in there as well, more hard drives. Now the printer, number 36 here, that we're gonna see it was, and there was another uh, lighter at the bottom of this desk too, but here is the contributor list. I believe this was, this was from the Democratic Party, 2007 maybe? I always forget what year exactly, but David had that list in there, and he also had, there's their marriage certificate. Um, but, yeah, it was curious that David had that list, and it was curious that that list was inside of the printer. It's not very likely people leave it in the printer. That's probably another hard drive there, number 37. And now we're looking at the wall. We're going to look at some of Kamel's accolades. But I think the fact that the that there was, they printed up stuff inside of the printer still, on the in the printer tray, to me, that also looked like a scene that was interrupted. That's just my view. And there's some more of the Kamel, the University of Minnesota, Master of Public Health. Very cool. 
Now we're going to look at the daughter's bathroom, the second bathroom inside of the house. Here are the two sinks. You can see one is used, the other is not used by the daughter, by Rania. If she had to use like a step stool to maybe get up there, or I'm not exactly sure how tall she was, but there's a sponge next to it too, almost like it was going to be cleaned. The way that the sink is, I guess not this sink, but the other one that we're going to look at, but the way that this, the second sink is, uh, just is kind of odd to me, I guess, you know, you brush your teeth, but generally you would wash it out or even later, a couple days later. So it makes me wonder when was the last time that they brushed their teeth. There's the three photos and I've had some differing views on those three photos as well. They look kind of odd to me. I'll just leave it at that. You can see the toilet seat is open. Two towels there on the floor. Another thing to note, there is toilet paper there, but we're not going to see toilet paper inside of that toilet as far as I know, close up of those towels. You can see that the toilet seat lid looks wiped, but is that toilet paper or is that more closer to uh, possibly towels, paper towels, or is it something else? It's not bread, it's not food. There's another cup. But there is no, there's the, the toys, but the curtain is not up. So another strange thing I would think would be taken into consideration. Now we're getting into the toys here. And of course, that's not how they were found. So you'll see multiple photos with toys next to the door and then other photos where the toy isn't next to the to the door so of course you had two entries you had the apple valley police department and then you had the the bca team and the detectives apple valley police department detectives too more toys all over the ground and doesn't this look like a scene interrupted? I mean, obviously it's a child's room. It could just be a regular child's room. But I would also, uh, I would also look at signs of a not maybe not signs of a struggle, just signs of weird stuff, I guess. But you can see that the curtain is open. The child's room curtain is a little bit open there. Here's some of the photos. A lot of lots of photos of everybody, not just of David, not just of Kamel. But all three of them, lots of photos of all three of them together. They're focusing on that bed. They're just taking photos of how they found that bed. Seeing what's on this wall here. Into My Little Pony. Now we're getting closer to the, to the closet. And no blood, nothing like that was found. Nothing of value pretty much from what they're telling us was, was found here in this. This is all just normal. Uh, just a regular child's room. And nothing suspicious, no signs of intrusion, no signs of a struggle, nothing like that in this room. There was another, uh, there was also another world map at the top that we kind of missed, but there was a world map there as well in the upper left corner. Okay, now looking at the master bedroom, first thing you notice, dog feces. Notice the socks on the floor. That window was open a little bit. Now watch this bed. Watch how things move around as they, uh, as the investigation continues. You can see the gun safe in there is open. But as it continues, you'll start to see things on the bed moving around here. Um, of course, you can see the dog feces there. You can see which rooms the dog feces was in and which rooms the dog feces was not in. There's the socks. There's a little notepad, a little piece of paper. Anybody could have written a suicide note right there if they wanted to, but guess didn't do that getting a close-up view here nicer view of the pin and the paper nothing on it nothing of value they don't mark it they don't um, take it in for evidence or anything so I'm assuming there's nothing of value on it now you can see the number 38 on the gun safe in the back there is a magazine a full magazine inside of that gun safe there you can see it looks like it's plugged in somewhere too as well see right above the Vicks Vapor Rub and you'll see some in some of these photos the uh, the vacuum is out and other photos the vacuum is in so we're going back and forth a little bit here you can, and if you look at that bed it looks like some of the bed sheet might have been cut a little bit on the right side so again one of the windows both of the windows look like they were 
and they were just open just a little bit at the bottom of the curtain of course right there they're not you'll see some of that stuff that is underneath that gun safe at one point some of that stuff will be on the floor it does look like a gun holster that is in there you can clearly see a marijuana pipe some wristbands there and this does open this safe does open two ways there's also a set of keys that we can see but the safe does open two ways it is by by the touch pad up top which is probably like a keypad i believe it is labeled as a keypad and uh, you can also open it through keys there is a place where you can insert a key as well and there you see it right there unless you got to do both i don't know <laughs> be good to find out there's that lamp full mag inside mag looks black but it's actually silver and they'll give us some close-up views there it's number 44 and one of the evidence tags it's from another angle almost looks like there's something at the bottom like a s at the bottom it's interesting too safe is number 38 the safe is taken as evidence Whereas number 34, the recliner, at least part of the recliner, is not taken. Of course, big difference in the size, but still, some things are taken, some things aren't. There's no blood on that gun safe either. It's just touch DNA, and it only matches Camille. Another close-up view. It definitely looks like a 5 at the bottom in that view. And here you can see that um, this is loaded. There are 11 rounds in this one. That was made clear. At first I thought this was tied to the murder weapon, but it's not. This is the second one. This is the one that's found in the gun safe. Has hollow points as well. Now we're looking up. You can see above the lamp there, some little markings. David's pants on the ground, other stuff on the ground, a blanket on the ground. Kamel. So it was always a question of what side is this? Was this David's side or Kamel's side? Also looks like there's a there's a knife, another knife right there. I, I'm not sure if that's a knife. It's hard to tell. It's something though. The watch, Sharpie, some books. All this stuff just right here. So I'm not sure if this was a side that David slept on or the side that Kamel slept on. Hard to tell. There's the holster on the ground. Somebody brought up that the jeans look kind of wet. So let me know if you see that. If you look at those jeans in the past photos, if they look wet to you. I'd love to hear your guys' view on that. And now you can see the vacuum is back inside. Of course, the, va the vacuum was inside of the closet at first. And then in later photos, the vacuum was pulled out. And I'm assuming that's when they went there, behind the vacuum. There's another large trunk case. Never did find out what was in that trunk case, but be good to know. Some of Kamel's purses, some of her items, more of her items. Does this look like a scene that was interrupted as well? Any signs of a struggle, anything like that? Looking at more, I see the wire going up next to where the books are. I was curious what that is, just a set of lights or something else. The attic is right above this area as well. Probably connected to those lights up top is where that power plug is going in. Let me know if you notice anything on that bookshelf as well. Some interesting books over there, I'm sure. And there is the entryway into the attic that they won't find until much later. What else do you see here? What do you see of value here? I'm not seeing too much, but still curious. And of course, weed out on the table. Kids around, but just going to leave the weed out on the table like that. The weed out on the table, the way that it is, looks to me generally like a scene that was interrupted. Somebody got interrupted doing something. Nobody just, you know, puts this stuff out there and then decides to go kill their kids. Uh, you can see right now the credit cards are not out there in the image before they were so they're put they're pulled out there and then they're all photographed but right now this is what, it, what you're looking at right now is how it, it was found and that's probably Kamel's cell phone 
and there's the weed just laying out there in transit about to be used the weed was closed be good to know if we could tell how old this weed was how long it might have been sitting there I think that would be a good a good thing number 42 Camille's cell phone and you did see the, those uh, credit cards and the debit cards that were out there but those were not out there like that they were put out there by the police and photographed see the window open the curtain open a little bit now we're gonna make our way into the bathroom here a few key things that we noticed inside of that bathroom that were interesting as well obviously the sink I first thought that that was blood in the sink Police don't indicate that it is. I don't know what it is. Bong water, whatever it is. It's something. Paper towels again on the ground. Paper towels in every room. Now this one doesn't have any toilet paper. No toilet paper in this sink. But you can see, what is this? What are we looking at here? If it's not blood, I'd love to know what it is. Is it more darker? These better photos kind of look a little more dark. It still looks reddish to me, so I don't know. There's the bong there in the corner. And a nice little note there. another cup we're gonna see cups next to every toilet for some reason there will be cups but I just found it a little strange in this one that there's no toilet paper when this should have been the one that I would expect it to have toilet paper first but apparently not it's a lighter on the ground probably I could have been used to light the bong I'm sure the towel so now they open it up you can clearly see that it's been wiped the top of this the seat has been wiped. There's a toothbrush there, probably used to clean that bong water as well. Some of the Camel stuff. So definitely a shared bathroom. And the curtain. So this one does have the curtain, at least. The curtain is attached. And again, just looking inside, they don't find anything of value. Nothing, no blood, nothing like that. No signs of a struggle. We're now looking at the Crowley garage. We're gonna see the two cars in there. Uh, the black car was the one that Sidra dropped off in October, and the gray one is one that was that Mr. Alon bought for David. Here's David's little tool shed area. You can see all the nice tools there. Uh, some interesting stuff on that wall. There might have been a camera mounted on that wall has been one of the theories. Haven't really found too much to it, but Here's another close-up view of that desk there. And uh, you'll see in the back, there was a, there's a Gray State photograph or Gray State poster that shows the prices and stuff of uh, t-shirts, stickers, etc. 20 bucks, something. There is another chest there, another uh, black box there. And we're just getting a nice view of the whole car here as well. This black car, again, was the one that was brought in, uh, brought by Sidra. Sidra picked up a different car and left this black one there. So this one was there since October of 2014. They got the plates on there. And the other car, the gray one, from what I was told, uh, was the one that um, Mr. Alon bought for David. We're getting some more shots of the tools everything that's on the walls there two bikes two helmets in the back all the tools show snuggling tools everything like that here's the other side of the garage there's an American flag there's that garage door you get to see the other side of the garage door there and how nice and neat some of the stuff on those shelves are as well. Another Gray State poster. Ron Paul sticker. You can also see those targets in the back. Some of the same targets. And you can get a general view of where the garage was and the distance into the house. There's some of those targets again. Uh, some of the same ones were left outside of the house. RFID clinic. Interesting there. Now we're looking more, a little closer at the gray car both Toyotas look like one might have been up for purchase they might have been wanting to sell one of these cars Let's see about that there were uh, theories that they have planned to move to California so they wouldn't need two cars so 
even more reason to think that they might have been wanting to sell one of them, if that's true. <clears throat> now we're going to look inside of that gray car. Again, this is the uh, major car here and lots of survival things in there. Um, some might say that this is a get out of Dodge packet. You never know. But it's very important to note that it was found in this trunk and nothing is mentioned about the other trunk. But you gotta have some ammo. He's got the gun there, so if he needed to take his gun with him, boom, throw it in there. It's all legal, it's all right. Maybe not in California. <laughs> so, good shots, good close up shots of all this stuff here. That makes you think um, that they were planning on leaving tickets. You can look at the date of the tickets when they're valid, too. This is one of the item number 46s and 47s. There are three, I believe, three or four different item lists, so. A close up of those bullets. You can see the shape that they're in. And we're going to look at those shelves that we were talking about. There's a bullet exchange photo in the back, some tiki lights for outside, probably in the backyard. And just yeah, another good shot there. I think we're going to start closing up on that door, getting a nice close up view of that door there. Definitely some barbecue gear, some paint rollers. And they close up on that door just to make sure no signs of force entry or anything. So when they're talking about no signs of force entry, that's one of the things that they're talking about. And there it is. There is the guillotine shot. And now we have come to the basement. Now we're going to start looking inside of the basement. You see here the door is closed. In the next shot we're going to see the door is open. I do believe the door was open that it was found like this. And now we're going to get try to give you all of the different shots that we have of those stairs going down in some type of order uh, so you can see all these first shots that we're going to see here should have the stairs in them at some angle at some point we're looking down now and the hair that I thought that was kind of weird that some hair was just kind of randomly there looking for any signs of blood anything like that if a hand or something like that was dragged down here no signs of that but definitely a little piece of hair that we're going to see no flesh or anything that's found but the hair is very interesting and then the the poop that's found that hair it looks like it's consistent with the hair and stuff that was found upstairs a couple of shots of that um, of the dog feces here good close-ups there still looking at the stairs trying to give you guys a view of a th almost like a 360 of what it would look like if you were to um, look at at the stairs because when we first got some of the photos it was still hard to figure out where the stairs were of course now we have the actual diagram so if you guys need those we we definitely got those for you you can see the dog poop on the ground you're gonna see that everywhere it's all over this area um, it, when they say all over it's not like it's piled on top of each other or anything it's just you see some here some there some there and it's everywhere if you really look at all these shots if you were to calculate them you'd see a a lot of these shots do have some type of dog feces in them. I thought the Spider-Man was interesting because there was one one of Kamel's friends that said David was um, going to be a part of the next Spider-Man movie. I was trying to find the timeline, figure out what Spider-Man movie they were talking about. Maybe there's some truth to that. I don't know. All right, and uh, still looking at this, you can see this is when the police come down here. Obviously, they're like, what is this? I'm going to see some guns, some, some other... Um, some other weapons, some military stuff, you know, props, things like that, whatever it is, but definitely would raise their eyebrows to see if this guy is stocking up for like World War III or something like that. <clears throat> of course, we know that's not true or anything, but still, I mean, they don't know. They don't know what's going on at, at this point, so... More stuff of the uh, table there. This is all still in that open area on the bottom. Um, there you go there's some ammo and some interesting stuff here but this is all kind of in that in that in that open area still we're still there looking behind where that black couch is that black couch also behind that black couch we're going to see what might be some decomp that leaked through the through the living room floor we're going to see that here closely close up <coughs> and these weapons more shots of the weapons of course
yeah, I mean, props, whatever, dummies, um, paintball stuff, whatever it is, uh, to the cops, it must have looked kind of strange. It must have looked strange to them to see all this stuff here. But it wouldn't take them long to figure out that this was a soldier, right? And why is all this stuff here? Were they packing up? Were they getting ready? I mean, was this part of their, their move? It's, you know, there's movies on the ground you can see over there too as well. So, I don't know what that pipe is. Oh, like a bong pipe. Oh, I didn't notice that before on that black case there. It's always something that I don't know. That's why I keep going over these and making sure everybody has them because another set of eyes might see something that, that I missed. So, with the drum set, you can see how old that drum set was, how new it was. You can see David's U.S. military bag there on the ground. Uh, we can see the Don't Trend on Me. That's a big one. I believe the flag was a Pakistani flag. I believe that was... Uh, took a little while to figure that out, but a quick search, and someone was able to quickly figure that out. The head there, the white head, I think that is part of... Uh, there's a scene in the trailer that shows this guy's head turning white with blood, and I think that was used for that prop. Muse, I don't really know that much about them, so you guys probably do. I don't know. I'm not really into that, but uh, Patriots Rise, getting another close up of the Gray State photo here. Where those pillows were is where one of the windows are. You can see the uh, one of the boards on the ceiling is now out. David's equipment, all of his music gear. All right down here, still in this open area. Some more posters. Some more shots of that. It's a close up of that. All these photos. Nice FEMA shot there. <laughs> the Dark Knight, Batman, definitely. So I was a fan of that. And here is some of the decomp stuff that we're going to see in the back on that wall. You'll be you'll start to see what I first thought was blood. I don't know what it is, but definitely it's if it's not blood, it's decomp, a mixture of both, etc. It's something, but I have questions. Maybe it was some type of leak or something. That could be too, I guess. But I just found it kind of odd that this is also in the same area where the bullet will crack will go into the south wall so this is all on the south wall here is where it's all going to be and now we're going to get into that bullet shot this is f from the living room so this is the bullet that goes down shoots into the uh into the south wall and is lodged there getting some good close-up shots of that Hey, this bullet travels. It's a, it travels pretty far. Goes through wood. That's I believe that's real wood. Goes all the way down through this, through the paneling, and lodges into that south wall. So interesting. And of course, nothing ever comes of that bullet. There's no blood. There's nothing tied to it. They don't. Even, they can't even. They don't even have lead that's tied to it. So that, that was kind of odd. But. When they cut it out, you can see that's at this point, they've cut it out to kind of uh, preserve it as best as they can. They've taken out some of those boards on the top. This will give us a better view, a better, better angle of where that bullet went, what, where it came from. Because it's a very important one. Um, this is a missed shot, whatever it is, whoever did it, somebody missed. They shot at the ground and missed. I don't know, that's the way I took it. So that's the other side of F that we're seeing there. This is what it looks like. We saw this in the living room when the carpet was pulled back. Now we're getting a shot of it from what it looks like on the on the basement and where it's lodged there. I think is also interesting. You can get a very good shot there of how big that bullet hole is. And going down, now it's a little wet. If you look at where F is in that last shot when it was labeled, it looked a little wet. A little different. There's another shot there. Some of that, uh, some of that side wall goes right into this lens right on top of here. That was interesting too. I 
drywall. It just lands right in the drywall there. Getting a, getting some other shots, and they're just kind of. And and again, these are these are from two or three different sets of photos, maybe from a combination of three or four different cameras. So that's why it looks kind of different. But here it looks a little wet. If you look at F the way it is, it looks a little wet to me. And you don't see the bullet there. And that's just that just shows kind of how deep it went in. Wow, look at that. That's really deep. And that's where it's lodged. So they cut that out. Uh, this is F. This is number 45. Item number 45, bullet number 45. And if you look up number 45, there's really, there's, they don't find anything. They can't rule anybody out, but that just means they don't have any any way to tie it to, to any of, the, of David, Kamel, or Rania either. And they're clear to note that. All the documents note that as well. All right, you can see a lot of dog feces there. Now we're going to go into the bathroom. We're going to start to head our, make our way into that bathroom. It's very easy first looking at the photos to get kind of confused of where the layout, what the whole layout of this house is, unless you've been there, unless you've seen it. Now we're moving into this bathroom. This looks like a built-in bathroom. This, uh, maybe David built this himself. It looks like he was building. There's, there's a couple rooms back here. It's actually pretty, pretty nice. You can see that tubing. That's still a question that, that I have. Also, the sink is plugged. Um, definitely good to look inside of that toilet even though we're looking at the sink here really nothing there you're not seeing anything about anything similar to what we've seen in the sink in the master bedroom this looks just like a sink that hasn't been cleaned this looks like like a man sink <laughs> this is like a man cave this is all part of it this these red uh, these circle things are actually in insulation so i think I don't know if that was because of the whole music thing that he was working on, but you can definitely tell that here, unless there's you know more to it there. But it just seemed like David was a was a builder. He was building these things. He, had, he uses two different types. Some of the, some are the blocks right under that toilet paper. You notice toilet paper. Toilet paper is pretty full too. And there's a cup next to that toilet. We're gonna get a, another close up shot of that toilet because this is a very important one to measure that water see how low that water is and it's clean no indication of any dog or anything accessing that water but the dog would have had access to it and there's the towel the bleach towel right there and now we're gonna get another shot of the towel and then we're gonna make our way out of this bathroom I think that's all that's about all the photos they have of that bathroom you see that photo there Going back down this hall, and we're going to make our way back into the back uh, to where the washer and dryer are. And we see some more dog feces on our way. There's two more rooms back here to the left, and I believe to the right. And there's that door. That door is just kind of just randomly there on the ground. There's a pantry to the right of this photo, I believe. To the left is where the washer and dryer are. You can see some Christmas present wrapping paper there. You can see another dog carrying case, some more luggage, uh, some interesting stuff there. There's actually things in the in the dryer is what it looks like. So again, uh, not too many people kill themselves. They leave the they leave all of this out and then kill themselves. It's hard to believe, but just getting some more shots of that sink too and here's the back area where the heater is some more of the military gear probably for props things like that just storage a lot of storage space here some of that Morton Looks like was that cement? Oh, salt! Right, the salt probably to salt down the um, the garage, the driveway. Sorry. All right, now we're going into that pantry. See some water there. You see a lot of. Uh, this is good. Everybody should have stuff like this. You really need this because you just never know. It's always good to have. If something major happens. You can't get to the grocery store. You can't get to water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everybody should have something like this if you have a room, if you have space. So they definitely did. Some of that e food stuff, I've looked into some of that. Storable foods, what it looks like breakfast, rations. 
pretty well stocked up. Some sausage and tomato sauce. All right. Water treatment, water filter stuff. So they definitely, uh, definitely know a lot about um, the bad water that we have, <laughs> the bad air, the bad everything. Tons of water there, so they got their own water. But they are ready. They are stored. They are stacked. They are ready if they needed to, um, if they were not able to get to the grocery store or not able to get to food, water, they were ready. I think that's the most important there. And I want to thank everybody for watching this for looking at this I hope this helps I hope the uh, I hope looking at all of this helped you guys because we, we got a long way to go here and a short time to get there let's go